Today we are checking out the incognito belt. This is a belt with synthetic urine attached, designed for discrete use during drug testing. This synthetic urine is crafted to pass both drug tests and lab validity checks. I'll be sharing the good, the bad, and everything in between. But before we jump in, make sure to hit subscribe, leave a like, and ring the bell to stay updated. Let's unbox this. Inside we've got a urine bag on a belt, two heat pads, and a set of instructions. First, let's look at belt. It features the Velcro strap. It's elastic and can fit up to 48 inch waist. In a bit, I'll show you how to wear it correctly since most online pictures get it wrong. The urine bag has a temperature strip, which as I stressed before is crucial. Submit a sample at the wrong temperature and you'll be asked to redo it under direct observation. Let's be real, none of us want that kind of attention. The belt also has a tube with two clips for safety. You can route this tube through your zipper, making it super easy to fill the sample cup. The bag holds three and a half ounces of urine, enough for up to three uses. Remember, you can't refill this belt, so you need a new one after it's empty. The instructions are super clear, and they have a phone number for any queries or issues you might face. The only gripe I have with the incognito belt is its price. However, considering it comes with an all-inclusive package with the urine, a discrete method to carry during the drug test, and a means to heat it, I'd say the price is fairly justified. Now let's learn to use it right. First, open and activate the heat pad. I already have an activated heat pad here, so I'll use it. It has a sticky side, which you should attach to the urine bag, between the back and the belt. Avoid skin contact with the heat pad to prevent burns, and don't let it touch the temperature strip or it will mess up the reading. And remember, Never heat this belt in a microwave. A few seconds are enough to burst the bag and you don't want urine all over your microwave, right? After attaching the heat pad, close both clips. And cut the end of your tube to release the urine when needed. To wear it properly, Position it on your waist with the bag sandwiched between the body and the belt. I noticed a lot of pictures online showing the bag on the outside, but that's not correct. I reckon those photos are shot to display the bag, but in actual use, it should rest inside your belt snug against your body. Your body heat can assist in maintaining normal urine temperature should the heat pad fail for any reason. Then, put on your pants. I suggest pants with a fly for easy access. Then wear loose clothes on top. As you can see, the belt is pretty discreet and blends in seamlessly under the clothing. Before the test, you'll be asked to empty your pockets, but they can't frisk or touch you, so they won't find the incognito belt. In the testing bathroom, check the urine temperature. If it is within 94 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, unclip and fill up the cup. Reclip and you're up to go. Pretty easy, right? Compared to other synthetic urines, the incognito belt is a bit pricier. However, with the synthetic kits like Subsolution or Quick Luck, you also need to think about how to hide them effectively, which usually means buying something like a stash lag belt. Quick Luck plus a stash lag belt would set you back $125, while incognito belt is $130. Not a huge difference, especially considering the convenience factor. Sure, it's a bit pricey, but if passing that drug test is crucial, cost shouldn't be an issue. To get this kit, click on the link in the description.